and welcome to Tech Now, the web series for ServiceNow admins, builders, and developers on a wide variety of platform topics. My name is Chuck Tomasi. I am so glad you're here. We are going to be talking with the one and only Tech Now team member, Jeremy Duncan, about configuring the Now Experience workspace. Let's do some quick introductions for those of you that may be joining us for the first time. My name is Chuck Tomasi, as I mentioned, senior developer advocate on the developer team. I've been here for a long time. We'll just say since 2010. <laughs> I, I'm going to stop doing the math and just say since 2010. That's, that's as far as I'm going. I was a customer for a couple of years before that. And uh, my role has always been in custom applications, integrations, the platform in general. There's a bunch of other stuff on this slide that you can read. I won't read the slide to you because we want to keep these introductions short and get into the great topic. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Craig Stepp. All right. And uh, as he mentioned, I'm Craig Stepp. I'm a staff programmer lead at um, Cloud Labs. And Cloud Labs runs the infrastructure for our training and certification department where we, uh, you know, I spin up instances for everybody to be able to take classes and attend the webinars and knowledge and all that good stuff. Uh, I've been here since 2014, so I'm coming up on seven years, which uh, is kind of surprising that they kept me around so long, but I'm here. <laughs> so anyway, um, so I'll turn it over to Jeremy. Thanks, Craig. Hey, folks, I'm Jeremy Duncan, a platform architect here at ServiceNow on our workflow design studio team. Uh, much like Chuck, I started as a customer uh, many moons ago. I've uh, been at ServiceNow for a little over a year and a half now. Um, definitely focused on enterprise, federal, commercial inter inter enterprise, excuse me, implementations over my career. Um, and just a little bit of a personal uh, background, I am a reserve police officer. Um, so I get to write code and play during the day and go fight crime at night or on the weekends. And I like really Batman. enjoy camping with my wife. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, and I do enjoy camping with, with my wife and kids. So uh, thanks for having me today. And I'll pass it back to Craig for the agenda. Okay, Jeremy, so where's the hat? Where's the hat, Jeremy? Oh, it's a, I keep my handy hat right here. So I just, I wasn't sure whether to go with it today, but People now that you mentioned it. not having a bow tie, I got to give you a thing about the hat. <laughs> right, here we go. I'll keep right. it on now. <laughs> so today's agenda, we're going to have a review of the agent workspace, and Jeremy's going to deliver that, and he's going to give us a demonstration. And, of course, we'll be taking everybody's questions as we move along through the demo today. And a couple of things I wanted to bring your attention, if you haven't listened to it yet, the Breakpoint podcast, which is, uh, if you can't tell by the little cartoony guy over there, I meant Chuck, um, he is the host, and he talks to different developers and, I guess, different people around ServiceNow about uh, about themselves. So tonight, uh, tonight, today, actually, he's going to be recording one with Char and Lynn, uh, and they're going to talk about the command line interface for ServiceNow, which uh, I'm kind of interested in that. I've played around with that before, and I'm curious to see hear more about it. So you can subscribe to Breakpoint at all your favorite, you know, podcast outlets, you know, Google Podcasts or Pocket, um, what was that? Uh, Pocket Cast, that was the other one, or Apple Podcast, any of that stuff. And if you like all the stuff you see today, you can check it out for yourself. And you can do that over at developer.servicenow.com. It's really easy to sign up for your own developer instance, and you can get it right away and start enabling plugins and uh, try out some of the things, like I said, we we talk about today or even in the past that you, you may have uh, checked out on our uh, previous shows. Uh, there's also documentation all over there. You get access to early releases like Quebec, which isn't quite out yet, but it is coming. Uh, you can, there's scripting API, developer events, all kinds of information over there to get you going if you're uh, new to ServiceNow or even if you've been part of ServiceNow uh, ecosystem for a while, you can get your feet wet, maybe other parts of ServiceNow, which you haven't uh, seen before. And now I'm going to turn it over to Jeremy, and he's going to talk about Workspace, a.k.a. Agent Workspace. Sounds like you're talking about a spy thing or something. But. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good point. And, and there is a difference. So, folks, uh, the, thank you for joining today's TechNow episode, which is all about configuring the Now Platform <clears throat> Agent Workspace. Before I get into any of the demonstration or, or conversation about 
our platform capabilities. Uh, this slide is to help protect me from any forward-looking statements that I may make, which may differ from what the future holds. Uh, while this would be unintentional, it does sometimes happen. So let's see how the workspace fits into the ServiceNow UI stack. So since um, May of 2016, when Helsinki gave us uh, the portal, service portal, and then agent uh, workspace appeared in 2019, um, we've had several UIs available to us, right? And uh, a quick history lesson uh, for the newcomers, UI 15 and CMS were our basis for the uh, user experience or user interface. Um, but then, then came Portal, then came uh, Agent Workspace. And now today, uh, we broaden the horizons in Workspace uh, with Quebec, which is uh, going general availability very soon. Um, you'll start to see some enhancements there, and we'll talk about some of those today. Workspace is the most common place for agents uh, within the enterprise to go do their work. Example of these personas can come from IT, from customer service, field service, HR, the whole gamut. And I would consider Workspace to be synonymous with UI 16 with its intended outcome. Obviously not the look and feel, but the intended outcome is the same, is that agents, that, that folks working behind the scenes can get their work done in a quick manner. Um, and one might ask, why so many user interfaces? And the answer um, that I can give is that we've listened to our customers. Uh, we've grown a lot since uh, early UI 15 CMS. And thanks to the input uh, from our customers, we've invested heavily in making that user experience better. And so now that you've seen where Workspace fits in this UI stack, let's dig into what Workspace really is. So as I mentioned before, introduced in March of 2019, Agent Workspace uh, was designed to be this integrated and intuitive experience, which was uh, the goal was to make the agent experience better, obviously increase productivity. Uh, and really in short, I would consider it to be that modern one-stop shop for agents of all kinds to get their work done. And I'll kind of demonstrate the difference between the way we've done work in the past on the platform and how we'll uh, move forward in doing that with Workspace. So with that said, let's begin to break it down. So what is Workspace really? And I would simplify that by saying it's a UI container filled with components created on the now experience UI framework. Uh, if you rewind a few episodes of Tech Now back to episode 78, uh, Wolfgang uh, gives us a great intro into the now experience framework and, and starts to use that CLI that Chuck's gonna talk about on Breakpoint uh, to, to start building some of those uh, custom components that you will see in the, in the framework moving forward uh, with the Quebec release. Um, Landing page components can be configured using that UI uh, builder, a pre-Quebec. And then in Quebec and later, you'll start to be able to create even more experiences with UI builder. So you can see that on the right hand side, just a quick preview of UI builder. And as we have time at the end of, of the demonstration of agent workspace configuration, I'll dig into to what that looks like. Right. Uh, also, if you want more information on UI Builder, I believe Brad Tilton also uh, has a series uh, that you can find on the developer site under blogs. Is that correct, Chuck? Yeah, if you go to developer.servicenow.com slash blog.do, or just looking under connect in the blog menu, you can find uh, the now experience tag in the word cloud on the left, or you can just search for UI Builder. He's been cranking out a lot of these on how to do UI Builder, great information from getting started to some deeper topics. And he's still putting information out as we record this. I would expect more to be coming out through the month of March. So looking forward to that. Yeah, check that out and, and check out uh, any other series that we have around Workspace as, as we introduce UI Builder in a different light. I mean, we've seen UI Builder for, for several releases now, but you're gonna start seeing that open up and you'd be able to customize and configure a lot more. So pay attention to those. And, and, and some, some of that will help break down or demystify um, some of the questions that you might have, right, uh, as we go along, as we introduce this, this technology. So to do a quick, I just, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about 
uh, the now experience again. We're not going to deep dive in that. It's already uh, been started, and I'm sure we'll continue to talk about that in the future. But uh, that now experience components are those building blocks for creating the uh, great UIs on the platform. Right? These building blocks do follow web standards, and they're not beholden to, sp to specific languages or technologies like React, JS. We get the question all the time, is it supported? Is it built on it? Right. So while we do follow those web standards, we're not wrapping the entire solution around a singular uh, technology. Right. So ServiceNow is continually building that library of consistent and reusable ServiceNow specific components that you'll be able to, to modify and, and, and uh, build and even create yourself uh, using UI Builder in the future. So again, just a reminder, episode 78, Wolfgang, go check out Now Experience. He can, uh, he, he can start teaching you a lot about that. All right. And so as a quick overview, before we jump into the demo, I want to familiarize you with a few key areas that we will play in today. The, the workspace experience starts off with a landing page. This would be similar to a PA dashboard, and I'll start my demo uh, on a PA dashboard to kind of show you the difference. And that'd be the spot where an agent might uh, find key stats for the day before jumping into their individual workload. And just a quick note, uh, the workspace configurations all get inserted into a single namespace, which starts with forward slash now, forward slash workspace, and then the name of, of your agent workspace. Uh, environment, but you do have the ability to create multiple landing pages within that workspace, and you can modify the order to sh to sh in which they'll show up, and then you can also uh, uh, mo uh, allow access to those pages uh, via roles. All right, um, the landing page is is tailored for each group's needs. So as I mentioned before, you have CSM agents, you might have HR agents, you'll have different experiences based on that agent's work type, right? But the technology is the same across the stack. From the landing page, you'll see counters. These will update in real time when uh, cases uh, change state or if there's new work to be done. Clicking on those counters will reveal a list of the applicable records. And then from there, you can click into each individual record and start that work. And what you'll notice is, and this is the beauty of workspace, is you don't find yourself transitioning out of the workspace experience into a form view, right? It's all within that agent workspace experience. And we're going to actually modify some of those things today. Uh, and hopefully you'll leave the day with some knowledge you didn't start with, right? So from this landing page, as we move on to the next piece of, of the workspace stack, uh, agents will have access to several other sections to find and do their work. One of those is a list. So lists, as, if you remember what I said earlier, it's we're in agent workspace, we're synonymous with UI 16, right? So, so the list kind of serve that same purpose as the app menu modules that you find using the filter navigator in UI 16. But now we've added some flair. So rather than navigating to a, a list and then clicking into the table, jumping to a record, right? You experience that all in one pane of glass. And then we add some flair to that, right? And I'll demonstrate some of that here in just a moment. Um, and then in today's demo, we'll also show you how a privileged user would actually modify these uh, uh, list categories and filters that you see on the left-hand side. Uh, but an additional flair that we add is the ability for uh, your end users to be able to create their own list. So much like you could navigate to a record, create a favorite in UI 16, uh, you can now actually start to build your workspace uh, with meaningful uh, list filters that, that help you get your work done. So cool feature there. And so a breakdown of that form view. So we started at the, at the landing page. We moved into the list on the left-hand side. So now once you click into that record, we get this form view, right, also known as a record view. There are many different components working together on this page to create a unique and hopefully productive experience for your agents. So starting at the top, we see tabs. And as we navigate down the page, we see the form header, UI actions, that's a familiar term. Ribbon, that's relatively new. Form pane, related items, those sound familiar, right? Activity stream and the contextual side panel. 
So you'll see some some old stuff mixed with new stuff to help bring, again, that experience to the agent that's working in this panel, uh, the work that they need on, on one single page, driving that home. So put it all together. As I mentioned, you get the very first uh, full interface to be built with the Now Experience UI framework. You have a new way for your agents to interact with ServiceNow. You now have a basis on which your, your new user experience will evolve on the platform. So old timers like myself, Chuck, Craig, and, and probably many on this call have watched us evolve and how agents interact and work on the platform. And, and one of the cries for help was, can you make it more intuitive? Can you make it easier to use? So uh, again, that's new users that are coming on the platform, they're now experiencing experiencing this for the first time. And so now it's, you know, what would be next to make that even better? And I'll, I imagine that the learnings that we have from Workspace today will fit into now experience uh, how that framework will evolve future uh, user interfaces that we have. All right, so Chuck, as I transition to the demo, do we have a question that we might could answer? Real quick on pricing, do you know if this request, uh, if Workspace requires a pro license? Uh, Workspace is a platform feature. I'm not a licensing expert, but uh, Workspace should be a platform feature, which means it's available to you um, as, a, as a user interface, much like Service Portal is available to you. Now, there will be um, specific workspaces that are installed with different license packages, so CSM, HR, uh, as you pay for those subscriptions, you get those workspaces installed. Um, but as far as the technology goes, it should be available for your use. All right, and as always, standard disclaimer, when you need to talk about pricing, we're not the right people. Apologize for that because this is being recorded in 2021 and pricing models have changed over time. Please talk to your account team for the latest information about pricing and licensing. Yeah. So, as I mentioned earlier, we start with uh, the dashboard in UI 16 as what I would consider an older experience, right? And what, what our goal is, is to move into that workspace experience. So, as I showed you before, your landing page with your data that's clickable, right? Um, this is the end state. We'll back up and I'll show you how we get there. Um, also, access to your list, right? So, maybe you've got um, some IT involvement. You've got customer service involvement, um, having the ability to jump around, click into records, make changes, um, and, and update tickets in one pane of glass. That's our goal. That's, that's what Agent Workspace is all about. Now, again, as, you tr as we transition into the Quebec release, you'll start to see some, some workspace features that uh, you have at your fingertips to create even more custom uh, experiences on the platform, right? So again, we've, as I mentioned, we've made significant investments to enable our citizen developers to, to utilize the UI builder um, with the ability of, of getting even more custom to build those uh, co components yourself rather than using the over 100 components that we have out of box today uh, in Quebec. Um, those experiences that you build can come in the form of a workspace or a service portal. So the question has come up, can you build service portal experiences using UI Builder? While the answer is a yes, it's a yes dot dot dot, right? Um, we, don't, we don't want you uh, necessarily jumping into creating those experiences in uh, UI Builder uh, until you've got a plan of action to migrate away from portal. So while you can technically build pages um, and use some of these uh, reusable and configurable components, um, have a plan for that. Much like anything else in the platform, uh, come up with that migration plan and, and do it, um, I would say, smart, right? Do it in a smart way. So today we are going to focus on workspace. We won't get into portal. Um, and then the key words I want you to remember are agent and configurable. You've heard me say agent works workspace, and that um, refers to the workspaces that were originally released with Madrid. And then we have the all new configurable workspaces, which you'll see uh, for CSM uh, and, and uh, HR out of the gate in Quebec, and then you'll start to see more. 
um, but, but the configurable workspaces are related to that Quebec release. So we're gonna walk through today a couple of different ways to configure your workspaces. The first one would be using the workspace guided setup. I've got a favorite to it. However, if you type in agent, you should find the guided setup down in the agent list. And it's right here under workspaces and agent workspace guided setup. All right. And the first thing that we will uh, jump into, actually, before we go too much further here, um, I'm an old timer and <laughs> guided setup has not been something I've, I've naturally gravitated towards because I'm used to working um, back in UI 16. But I just have to give a shout out to guided setup as it relates to workspace because it's laid out nicely and in an order that makes sense, right? So if you prefer to jog on that paved road, have it have have everything smooth, this is the way you want to go, right? For the wanderers who like to kind of stroll through the mountain trails uh, to get work done on the platform, you obviously can navigate to the workspace um, this way and start making changes, right? So this is what we're going to start with is branding, but I kind of want to go back to the guided setup and take you down that path just to show you how it works for those of you who have not used guided setup before. So jumping into the branding and theming kind of gives you an overview of what that is and some things to think about as you brand uh, your workspace. So we're gonna jump into configure and we're gonna start with a dark and a light color for our branding. Just a quick note, um, the hashtag is required here. Uh, while I can type a color in and it shows up, it will not accept it without the hash, so make sure that you've got that. And I don't know if you noticed before, but we have a logo here and we've got the same color, uh, but, but we're actually gonna see that change here in just a moment. So we've added a couple of colors and we're gonna add a logo. One that I have doctored up just a little bit and we're gonna save and reload our workspace. And as you can see, the logo changed, and actually my color didn't. My second color did not change. Oh yes, it did, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, the first color is here, as you can see, it's a little bit lighter than the, the, left, uh, the left panel. Uh, and then and then you've got the color here, the highlighted color, that's what is uh, brand color number two, right? So use your favorite hex color editor, go grab a color and uh, update that um, a branding experience there in Workspace. And next up, um, Workspace does allow for, for other configurations like the list categories and filters, as I mentioned earlier, uh, landing pages, uh, record views, and playbooks. So we're going to jump right back into guided setup to do a few more of those things. So as I mentioned, we've got the list on the left-hand side. Don't forget, I'll, or excuse me, don't worry, I will come back to the landing page, I promise. Um, but we're going to jump into list next because the guided setup is taking us down that path next. So we're going to start with creating a list category. Um, and just a quick note on the, on the categories, uh, they won't show up unless you have a list beneath them. So we're going to configure this and um, we'll refresh and I'll kind of show you just so that you don't worry. So we're going to call this category uh, uh, stuff Jeremy wants to see. We'll give it a low order so that we make sure it top, uh, shows up at the top of the list. We'll make sure the agent workspace is the one selected. As I mentioned before, um, you can have workspaces for different uh, personas in the organization. Today, out of box, you're going to find IT and CSM are your two main personas that live within uh, agent workspace. So after we've created the category, logically, you know, taking the unbeaten path, right, we can jump right into workspace list and go ahead and create our filters. But being a, a creature of the guided setup habit, I want to go back to my list in the guided setup and actually go into configure here. It's going to take us to the same place, but I want to kind of show you how that works, right? 
once we get into the workspace list um, area, we want to make sure that we are looking for the table that we want uh, the list configuration for. So we're in this case, we're looking at uh, SN customer service case. Okay. Um, and, and so what we're going to do though, in that category, is we're going to create a new one called open entries. Category was stuff Jeremy wants to see. So we just created that, right? We're going to look at uh, cases and we'll just say active is true. And pick a few fields that we want to see. So short description. Look, not that. Take that out. Stage. And we'll leave it to that. Again, we'll give this a low order so that we uh, start at the top of the list here and submit. And as we navigate back over to the workspace, refresh and check out our list, we now see the list category that we just created, stuff Jeremy wants to see, with the list filter here, open entries, right? Um, again, you can filter that out. It would make sense to filter that out to what specifically you want to see. As I mentioned before, your end users do have the ability to create a list. It's pretty um, self-explanatory. You can start with an existing list or create your own. You can give the list a new name, call it other entries, and the data source. We're probably going to want to use the same table. Customer service. It pre-selects the, the default columns for us, and then we can add filters to that as well based on what we want to see. Okay. So we create that list. So that, again, that gives your users a little bit of a, almost an admin feel to be able to create their own list to see what they want to, but the lists that are here are your global uh, out-of-the-box lists. All right, so moving on to the record view, you've given your users uh, the list that they need to see so that they can jump right in to the ticket and see the details. Excuse me, sorry, I got a little happy there with the mouse. So now we start to look into the record view. And as I mentioned before, if you think back to the, to the slide that had all the, colors, the colored sections on it, this isn't your typical form view in UI 16. While the form view does play, uh, into this, uh, into the view. It's just one piece of many components that make up this, this uh, UI container, as I mentioned before. So we'll start today with modifying the header. We'll make some changes there. We'll then move into the ribbon and then the form down below, right? Just to kind of give you a peek into some of the configuration changes that you can make. Again, we're gonna stay in guided setup to do that. Um, so we'll jump right back over and back to guided setup. We've done branding and theming. We've modified our list. Now we're going to jump into forms. First thing on the list is the form header. So we jump right into setting up the form header. And again, we're looking at uh, case, customer service case. And the reason that's important, and, and I think uh, a great feature, is that depending on the record type, right, for customer service cases, you may want it to look a certain way. You may care about who the, uh, this contact card, right? You may, may care about who the account contact is. Um, but for IT, you may not, not want to use that feature, right? So you might even remove this contact card and just keep the timeline and, and maybe SLA data. So you've got some flexibility here based on the table, right, that the record view is coming from. So we're going to start with the, the header, and we're going to modify the subheading here. We're going to add the number. All right. And then we're going to jump down to the secondary values here after we save the record. Move over in the CSM workspace. I forgot to do this. Yeah. You won't be able to add secondary values until you're in the CSM workspace application. So as you can see down here, and, and I'm going to bounce back and forth real quick just so that you see the header 
right? You see information, short description, uh, the account, contact, priority, and state. You can validate that by, by looking here in the secondary values and see account, contact, consumer, and then you've got priority there as well, and then state. So we're gonna add a new one. And it's great that we have the contact information, or excuse me, the contact name, but we might wanna add the contact's mobile phone number, right? So we'll jump into contact, and we'll kinda dot walk this down, do contact, and mobile phone. And submit. And so that we make sure that this shows up next to the contact information, let's go ahead and give it an order of 250. And we'll go in and validate. Our changes were made. There we go. I had to pick a, a record with a contact that had a mobile phone number. <laughs> so Amy Chin's phone number is listed here. Don't try to call that number, it's fake. Uh, <laughs> so moving on from the header, um, so back to the space. So we made a change here, right? Now we wanna uh, modify the ribbon. So as I mentioned before, you've got several components here that make up this ribbon. Um, and as we start moving into UI Builder in the future and making ch changes, um, you'll start to make those configurations in UIB. For today, uh, we're gonna continue to work down the path of guided setup. And then again, I'll show you um, how you can modify some of those things as we uh, wrap up. So back to forms, we wanna configure our ribbon settings. And we're gonna look again for the uh, table of case. And I'm just going to do a quick show matching on the customer uh, service case uh, ribbons. And as you can see on that record, again, this is all about the table, customer service case. So this is the uh, record from that table. You see uh, the ribbons here. I've got three showing, which is accurate with what I'm showing here. We've got customer 360 timeline, active SLA, and then we've got one uh, that's deactivated. So that does match our experience. So now let's jump into the customer 360, which is, which is your contact card component. So if you're out on the developer site and you're looking under resources and you look at the components that are available, this is your contact card, okay? So one of the things that we may wanna do is change the size of these ribbons. So maybe the contact card needs to be a little bit smaller so that we can see uh, more information about the uh, active SLA over on the right. So in order to do that, we again, walk through the guided setup path, we jumped into the ribbon settings and we're just simply gonna change the width. We're gonna change it to a three. And because we changed the 360 size, we wanna make active SLA a little bit bigger. And so we're gonna change that width to a five. One thing I'll, I'll pull your eyes to is the ribbon component attributes. So this is the, um, the way that you would change any attributes that are configurable for that particular ribbon, right? So active SLA has nothing other than the size that's available to be modified here. Um, but customer 360, just going back to that real quick, there were quite a few things that you can um, change about how that uh, cuts, right? By adding or removing uh, values. So as you can see, you've got a name, you've got a title, you've got phone numbers and email. So you can actually change those primary, secondary, and tertiary fields here with ease. So the, the beauty of all that is there's no code here. Um, so as you build out those, those ribbons and you utilize those out of the box components, you'll be able to make those change out having to dig deep and, and, uh, and code. All right, so we're gonna make those uh, width changes. Very simple change, I admit, um, but just to kind of show you the flexibility that you have without having to write any code. All right, so as you can see, contact card's a little smaller, SLA's a little bit bigger. So that's our ribbon settings. 
So let's jump over to the next part, which is the form. So we're working our way down that workspace, started, started with the list. Now we jumped into uh, the record view, but now we wanna kind of jump into uh, the form layout. Now the good news for us old timers is that um, the, the form view is modified or through the UI 16 the old way, right? So it's, there's no new way of, of necessarily modifying that form layout because it's read from the view. So you've got a workspace view, or if there is not a workspace view on a table that you create, um, which if you're following our, um, our app creator uh, within Studio and you create a workspace from that, that should be done for you. But in the event that you don't and you're starting from scratch, you're creating a table, you can create this view so that it can be uh, used in workspace and modified. So any changes that we make to this form view right now, either using the form designer or the old school form layout, will appear uh, in your case record, right? So if we were to take out the channel, social profile, asset, partner contact, uh, maybe we throw the needs attention right here above number, you know, make those changes, which we're used to, right? So this is not new to workspace. But as we make those changes, we'll see down here at the bottom that those uh, are live, okay? So we've got our case details down below, needs attention moved over to the left, we cleaned up this view uh, quite a bit. I'm going to go ahead and hide that um, uh, ribbon section in this with using this collapsible container to open this up just a little bit so that you can see that. But those are the form changes we just made. So that's simple. Uh, again, for for old timers, that's a that's kind of a, a reusable uh, feature, and that's how it's rendered uh, in the workspace. All right, moving right along we jump over into modification of the landing page. So what we showed you is the uh, out of the box landing page that comes with CSM, which has got quite a few reports. Uh, what you'll commonly see here are reports and um, lists uh, on a landing page. Again, uh, synonymous to that UI 16 dashboard that I started this with. Um, now, as you start to create your own custom experiences, right, uh, outside of Agent Workspace, and you start building your own workspaces, um, you'll have over 100 components available to you, uh, and then the ability to, to create your own components. So, <laughs> so your possibilities are, are unending uh, there. But as we talk about Agent Workspace and your existing landing pages, uh, you'll have a few that are available to you. So here's where we get to break away from UI 16 and uh, jump into something a, a little bit more exciting. So we're actually going to, before I do that, we're going to set, set things up for success. Uh, there's a little preview of what we might get to. Let's jump over into the workspace. There's a couple of different ways you can get into UI Builder. The first one I'm going to show you is the one you're going to use for modifying your agent workspace. For those who want to create new experiences, right? And one of those could be a workspace experience. You're going to navigate right to UI Builder to do that, right? But for the sake of modifying the agent workspace experience, we're going to open up the workspace. We're going to go back to the agent workspace scope for application. And you'll see a, a UI action available to you, which is open in UI Builder. So let's choose that. And what you see available to you are your landing pages for that experience. So what's out of box and what I showed you initially is this workspace. Okay, so you've got your reports that are available to you um, and you've got your list view. But what we're gonna do for this experience, we wanna create a new one, right? So as you can see here, we've got a, a header, we've got uh, some other things, but we, we're missing some stuff. We need to add some things here. So for those of you who like to start with a, a, a blank canvas, you have the ability to do that. If you want to create a landing page from a template, uh, we walk you through how to do that as well, right? But for the sake of um, 
just kind of creating from new, I will start this way. So um, let's go ahead and start by explaining what we've got here. The first thing is a collapsible container. So jumping over to the components on the left-hand side here, you see what's available to you for Agent Workspace. Seems like just a few things, but for landing pages, it's, it's the things that we feel like are, are necessary for your jumping off spot for your agents to get to the work that they're supposed to be doing. So again, I started with a, with a container. I dropped it in, just gonna kind of show you how I got here. And within that container, I allowed it to be collapsible. And you can start with it being collapsed or not, right? You can change the modal size and you can change the label that shows up here, right? So some of those configurable things that you get with components. Go ahead and remove that because I've already got one here, right? And let's go ahead and add a couple of things. We've got the ability to add rich text. So for those of you who want to show something in HTML, you don't want just plain text on the page. We give you some flexibility there and can even do some linking uh, from that rich text section. But we're going to go ahead and remove that, delete the component. And now we're left with this collapsible container. So now we want to report. So I don't know if those of you that recall building a reports to add to a dashboard, you're jumping from your dashboard page to your report builder, right? To get that report to show on the page. If you wanted a PA report, right? It's a little bit different process. Well, we simplify that with a UI builder for agent workspace and we call that data visualization. So you start by defining your source. So for this one, uh, we may want to see, uh, we'll stick with cases, right? So CS, customer, service, case. You can also type the table name if you want to, but I like getting right to it, so I'm going to type that in. Oh, not CS, SN. Sorry. All right, so we've got tables here. We've also got suggestions based on past tables that we've used, but I'm going to start with this. And then I'm going to add some conditions. So I may not want to see all records. I can, I can obviously select predefined conditions, but maybe I want to say active is true and assign to, excuse me, assignment group is dynamic. And we'll say one of my groups. Okay. So this looks familiar, right? So we started with a table, created a filter. We get a quick preview. We run that filter. We get a preview of, of what records we're going to see before we add it. And then we can add the source. So once we've added the source we, and we've completed the filter, we also get to see the visualization type that we can show, right? This is a little bit more limited than what you get in the report uh, feature, but I assume that that will continue to, to grow and, and build as we mature um, this uh, component as time goes on, right? So uh, we're good with a single score here. Um, there are some other uh, settings that you change as well. You can also do real-time update for that number, right? You can change the re refresh interval in minutes. So maybe we want that thing to, to refresh every one minute, right? We can show the label if we want to. And we can even uh, change how that number is presented. We can leave the chart size as auto. And we can make it small, we can make it medium, large, extra large. We can change the score size as well to be bigger on the page for us folks who might need the large print edition. But for now, we'll leave it to auto. Uh, one of the things, I'm gonna go ahead and save this. One of the other things I wanted you to, uh, to clue you in on is that what I just demonstrated was your typical report, right? So picking a table, creating a filter, and picking how that's presented. Another option that you have here with data sources are using your PA indicators. Now, I don't have uh, any of my PA uh, jobs uh, running right now, but this just goes to show the power in one interface. Again, you're not breaking away and moving into the reports. You're, you're, you're keeping up with this in, in, in one uh, interface. So you pick the indicator, you pick the breakdown that you want, right? You give it its value. You preview it again. I'm not going to have any data because I didn't uh, uh, run those uh, scheduled jobs. But it just goes to show that you have those same visualization features. You can show it as a single score. You can show it as an area, line, donut pie, things like that. So this is your configurable things that you have available to you that do not require any code. 
uh, simply configuration to show how that data shows up on the page. All right. So we've got a couple of things uh, for this guy to be able to, to make work work better, right? So as we save the page, let's actually go see how that looks for folks who are gonna hit the agent workspace from their left-hand nav. So if they type in agent workspace, home, they should see that page, right? It's loading, okay. Oh, wait a minute. That's not our page. Oh, okay. So let's fix that. One of the things that I mentioned earlier is a landing page is defined in a couple of different ways how, how your agents can see the landing page, right? So Workspace can have multiple landing pages so that it's dynamic and you can make that role-based and or order-based. So as you can see here, uh, the CSM landing page, which is out of the box, um, has an order of 75. So in order to make the experience landing page that we just created show up when agents actually click on that value, or click, excuse me, click on the workspace agent home, we need to set that to a lower value. Let's set that to 10. Let's update it. And now when the users click the home option, As you can see, the URL is the same. That doesn't change. There's no configuration there. Um, and now it takes us to this uh, landing page. Pretty bare. Um, obviously, if we spent a little bit of time on it, we would be able to um, make that a lot prettier and not have my ugly mug right there. Um, but as I mentioned before, you click into the live data, you jump right into the record that you care about, you see the details. So. So what we've curated up until this point is the way the header looks, the way the ribbons look, the form layout, right? And so the next thing we'll focus on are playbooks. This is a popular topic. This comes up in a lot of the conversations we have on the Workflow Design Studio. Um, and it's a fairly new topic as it, as it relates to workspace, right? And I would consider it a game changer for customer service. Um, again, they're not a new concept in the service management space. You'll see playbooks and run books referenced in the uh, security in uh, incident response uh, flows. Um, but, but the playbooks are, are based on your flow designer and process auto automation designer. If those are new terms for you, go check them out on the doc site. Um, but what this does is based on your flow, based on your process, based on how that's defined, you can create a playbook that you can make visible to your agents. Just to save a little bit of time, um, I was going to walk us through doing a time check. Uh, uh, Chuck, how are we doing? How much time we got? We're at about 10 minutes. And we still, I'd like to get in some Q&A, but we also have our closer to do, too. So yeah, okay. All right, cool. How much more you got to do? I'll bounce through it, right? So we're going to go right. over to Playbook. Cool. Type, type in Playbook, because we give you some out of the box. And the doc site's great on um, walking you through this, okay? So what we want to do is activate... Um, the CSM playbook, all right? And actually, I've already got that active. So we should see, so there's a couple of different places you'll see the playbook. One is gonna be in the related list down here at the bottom or in your contextual panel. So let's go make it active in the contextual panel in Workspace. Right. Playbook component. We want a UI. Excuse me. Sorry. Now playbook experience. We'll grab an icon. Actually, got one predetermined here. Book fill and view workspace active. We got a low order and under. Let's see. We'll go back to that record. run to the advanced view. I'm running through this real quick. And this is documented, by the way, in the doc site, as I mentioned before. We're gonna grab our experience ID. 
We want to let it know what the parent field is, which is the sysid of the record, and then the parent table. We'll define that. We'll save it. And then under conditions, we want a scripted condition here. And we hit save. And make sure that this is agent workspace, your workspace for the playbook. And now refresh, assuming there is a flow for this particular, let's go back lists, find our record that's got a case that's got a playbook and show you that. Oh man, Chuck, my playbook's not working. All right. Well, let's, let's Sorry, move on I, rather than yeah, getting at the time. Yeah, for sure. Sorry about that. So, folks, as I mentioned, a UI builder, you can create your own experiences. I'll wrap with this. Sorry, my playbook didn't uh, didn't take off very well. Um, but as you start to get into experiencing UI builder, um, you'll be able to modify a lot of things individually um, at the component level. So again, this is a sneak peek into Quebec. You can edit your heading badges. You can change your titles. You can change data sources from this page. You could change the layout, the, the, the container sizes, and start to build a lot of those experiences right here within UI Builder. So lots, lots to look forward to, lots of components out of the box to go play with. Check out Docs and Developer Site. You'll be able to see how to create all those things. And with that, I'll pass it. Uh, actually, let's do one quick thing. Put the share. And we'll talk about the top takeaways for today. All right. What, what do we hope that you got, got out of this is that Agent Workspace is one of, of many ServiceNow UIs. We bring the agents from multiple business units to that single UI. And then we configure the workspace via the Now Experience uh, framework, also known as UI Builder, as, as it relates to workspace. And so with that, I pass it back to Chuck. Sorry for the delay. No problem. Hey, thanks, Jeremy. A lot of great information. I know there's so much to learn about Workspace. We have a ton of questions. I'm just going to take a few quick ones. Uh, and I apologize if we can't get to your question live. We will be answering these offline in the next 24 to 48 hours and then posting those back to the community. You should get an email that says, thank you for your question. Here's a link, that sort of thing, whether we answered it live or not. You'll get that email. I tested it out last weekend again. So real quick, does ATF work with agent workspaces? ATF workspaces. That's a great question, and I don't know the answer to that. That's a fair well, answer. I don't know is always yeah. okay. In my book, it means we'll check and get back to you uh, uh, on that offline question. Um, yeah. A lot of questions around the ribbon. What is the total width cover, if any, and what are the units of that width? The width cover, so it, it's... It's reactive to the page, right? So you've, you've got your predefined um, ribbon settings, right? One through six. But as I, I showed you in the UI builder, you're going to have more options to, to dynamically change how big that space is and each component that fits in it. Um, so theoretically, you can fit as many components as you want in there. You're just going to have to make sure that you got enough space space on a on a page full screen again and that is to the way the page changes so it is it configured dynamically Hope that, that answers, answers the question. Question. how many how many ribbon components can be displayed it depends i guess is the answer on that yeah. one yeah what do you want your user okay. experience to be <laughs> uh do the workspace i'm, I'm trying to interpret this one because i think they use the wrong term in here it says i see the potential for workspace homepage to replace the team dashboards I think they mean the landing pages. Uh, mm -hmm. Do those landing pages support tabs in the same fashion as dashboards? So I believe so. Uh, there, there are components out there in the way you can containerize. I, I would say there's a dot, dot, dot on that. So today, right, 
you're limited in building your containers and putting things within that within that container, which can be collapsed. Uh, but in the future, as you start to use UI Builder and use the components that are available, uh, there should be one for, for sections um, or for mm -hmm. containers, uh, tab containers. But if not, remember, you can build your own. So we give you that power on the platform. All right. Thank you, Jeremy. I'm just going to wrap up real quick. So stick around. We do have some other information to share with you, including the Quebec release podcast or broadcast. No, sorry. Podcast on the brain. Join us. March 18th. <laughs> registration is open for that. You can find the registration link in the resources panel. If you're watching live, go click there. Register is totally free. You will find out more than just the platform features. You will get insights into ITSM and ITBM and CSM and HR and Oh, man, that's alphabet soup, isn't it? But uh, really, we want to invite you to go check out what else is available in Quebec that is going to be released. General availability in less than 30 days from this broadcast. It's mid-March, so it's coming, folks. It's coming. We also have Knowledge 21 digital experience coming up. Don't want to miss that either. So watch your mailboxes and keep your eye out for that. That is going to be starting, I believe the date was May 11th. Don't quote me on that. I'm going from memory on a meeting yesterday, but it is going to be in that mid-May time frame. So block out your calendars. We have learned a lot from last year about what people enjoy, where they attend, what they like, and we're going to bring you more of that good stuff. So watch your mailboxes for more information or go to knowledge.servicenow.com for the latest information. I invite you to go there. Finally, our next tech now is going to be on something I'm so, so excited about. Valerie Myers Christensen is going to be joining us to talk about App Engine Studio. This is our new application building engine, and she'll tell you how to get in and what it does. It is probably the sexiest thing I've seen in ServiceNow in a long time, and they've really oh. worked hard to make this useful, build your tables, build your flows. Think of Guided App Creator on the next generation. So if you're familiar with going into studio and starting an app, Guided App Creator is still there, but there's more easier ways, especially to enable those builders, those citizen developers in your organization. All right, I see it is the top of the hour, and I really, really thank you again for joining us. If you like this show, thank you very much. If you don't, my name is Craig Stepp. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> hey, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, everybody, and we will see you again real soon.